this prick? No, no, stop this. Hang on, hang on. Right, I've had an idea. Bear with me, we're going to need this. Right, let's restart the DLC and see if we can't improve it. Yep, yep, seven weeks before the start of the main game. Got it, hurry up. Right, now, what I'm about to do is not strictly within my job description, so probably best we just keep it between the two of us. Right, that's a good start. Oh, and we're going to need this. I'll handle the notes, mate. You can just fill in the gaps in your head. Right, we've seen what happens when the show runs in order. It's shit. Now then, let's see what the fuck's sake. Uh, hello, Dave. Hello, Bozeman. I'm getting reports that there's something wrong with the calls machine. No, no, it all looks fine to me. What are you doing, Dave? It's all good, mate. If anything, I'm improving things. Please don't do that, Dave. Just play in the applause, pick a clip at the brakes, and don't touch the calls machine. Good, he's gone. Let's touch the calls machine. Right, to get started, let's call any guest except guest one. We can see who's in which holding area on this little screen. Chelsea Buns, eh? Good choice. Seems like a bird who can handle a pint. Let's bring her on first and see how Eamon feels about it. Harry comes face to face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's the estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before we go live to Eamon and the gang, there's just time to look forward to what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 9.30, we have an in-depth documentary... Right, when you zoom in on the pad like that, the whole of the rest of the game pauses so you've got a little bit of time to think. Don't know why they didn't put it in the main game. Lazy. The downfall of Jacob Hamilton Mann, which forced this year's... Election. That's the night visitor at 9.30. Poorly narrated by Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue. It's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in Live and Spooky. And tonight... They'll be asking if the old brewery in Arsmonster... I'm, no, I'm not getting into a fight with Dave. <laughs> oh, yeah, this one's going to be the fight part. He's just counting, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I know. I'm a bit scared of him, too. You know, a bit. But, and my face is more valuable than yours. So if anyone's going to get punched, it's probably better that it's you. Yeah, you'll probably get lucky. you probably just kick in the... Yep, standing by. Good evening. I'm Eamon Tightly. Behind me is a true TV legend. Now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man, Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's here tonight to record a special reunion edition of Just the Job, but as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, places. It's time. Let's start the show. In five, four, three, four, three. When you're feeling restless and you just can't stay the course, I got just the job. When you smell an odor, but you just can't find the source, I got just the job. Slip it down your trail And once I'm finished pumping This is your show need a nap Cause that's just a job Thank you girls Cracking stuff Good evening friends and yes, it's Believe true. I can hardly really believe it myself. Yes, but we are back. Dave's out of pain. Hello, Eric. With the old side. Right, okay. Welcome to Bits of Your Life, team. Um, now, both Amy and I were hoping to pop up and see you earlier, but 
Well, just time got away from I us. could hear Eamon talking to you, Eric, on the feed. Oh. You heard all of that? Yep. There'll be no politics okay. tonight. Not on this show and um, that tonight. He's a Peter bear with me? Promise. So let's kick tonight off with a smile. And stand by, Eamon. Look at the mighty bear. Go, Eamon. Because you never know. Hold it right there, please. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's you. Yeah, it certainly is me. Oh, you naughty, <laughs> naughty <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Sorry, Frank, Frank, did you know about this? Yeah, look at that face. Of course you fucking did. Peter, you fuckers. You thought you were here tonight to record a special you reunion were, edition of Just the Job. I can't believe it. Just the job. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you back to the studio, you fuckers. I'm gonna have you. Emma, I can't bloody bit. Those bloody gases you're about all the way along. They They're all part of this way, Peter. Mind your step there. I don't know. Really know. <laughs> I can't believe it. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of your show. Right, I'm back. Cool, it's cool with the monster, are you? Is it? Anyway, just wanted to quickly say Eamon's a really great host. Really, really great. But he does tend to, um, how to put this, fall apart if you don't stick to the script. And I'm told the machine that normally does it is set to manual. So just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Simple. Oh, there's Eamon. Gotta go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Already fucked that, mate. Have you rolled? So, Eamon, how long have you been uh, planning this, Eamon? Eamon. How long have you been planning, Eamon? Eamon? Peter Gordon Clement, you were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering, to Fanny and Martin Clement. I know, right? Fucking tear away, they made of you. That's right, they got up at the crack of dawn to make the journey down to the capital by coach. No, I didn't. It's your infamous old man. No, it isn't. And her long suffering husband, Fanny and Martin Clement. You're not dead. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's just stick to the script, see what happens. You pop the piece in there and then head over to the sofa. Right, you old pet. Hello, pets. Make the best of us. And not the worst. Chelsea, bloody butt! Pizza, bloody Clement! <laughs> oh. <laughs> OK, lovely, lovely. Let's all take a seat now. That's great. So, um, lovely to have you both here. Uh, let me ask you, um, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement house? Fucking hell. Well, I think, well, for both of us, really, it was, uh, well, it was about his father's, right? I mean, mine, well, he was never there because, well, what with work and, and the pub, of course. But I reckon that were a lot easier than it were for our PT because he's no mark of a father. We're always there. Ah, me ma'am kept him in line most of the time. Yeah, she did, love. But, I mean, I mean, what, what about when she went to bingo or, or, you know, when she took that part-time evening job? I kept her safe. <laughs> Come on, P.T. Love. I've spent my whole bloody life trying to make up for the lack of love off me pa, right? But, and I'm sorry to say this, love, but P.T. here, well, he, he spent his whole life trying to make up for the lack of happiness. Oh, that's not fair. I had a good childhood, for the most part. You didn't, P.T. Uh, sorry, love, but, well, neither of us did. Well, that got serious quickly. Uh, Chelsea, what's your name? Uh, Chelsea, Chelsea Bonds. Do you want me number? Chelsea oh, Bonds. time to call another guest, mate. <laughs> so, how are you? Are you married? How many kids have you got? No bones for me, love. I mean, I did get pregnant once, you know, but uh, I couldn't keep it. I mean, it was during the war. I didn't even know who's it were, to be honest. But, um, well, you know, then something went wrong. And then after that, I just couldn't have any more. Oh, so, Chelsea, that's awful. Yeah, it is, love. But then, that's life, isn't it? It is awful sometimes. But you just got to keep on fighting. That you do. <gasps> oh. oh.
In 1938, you were a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, but already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this, Peter? Well, if you don't know my voice by now, we may well have lost the election. Well, it's Julia Salisbury. No, it isn't. It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Bond. She has literally just been on, Amen. They called me Ernie. Yeah, something's gone <laughs> wrong with the scheduling. Some prick called Dave, apparently. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> oh, we didn't like that. Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea. Julia. Yeah, it says Chelsea Julia. in the script. Yeah, it says Chelsea in the script. Would you like to call me Chelsea? Actually, like yeah, that'd be really helpful. Chelsea? Right. Well. Yeah, that'd be Excellent. So, Chelsea, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in Peter way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring Prime Minister? Well, I mean, obviously, I, I wasn't there, of course. You're one of his childhood sweethearts, according to the script. You're one of his childhood sweethearts. But seems unlikely, given our ages. Given our ages. Can you talk about it anyway? Can you talk about it anyway? Um, beep, beep, beep. Pick a guest. Um, well, uh, I well, would uh, imagine that uh, uh, that Peter was, was quite charming uh, in his Peter heyday and, and probably left behind a, a trail of broken hearts. Uh, just a couple. Trail of broken hearts. And I regret <laughs> them both an enormous <laughs> amount. Oh, how romantic. Julie Handbrake, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> See you for, for the finale. <laughs> Well, before we bring our next guest on, well, let's have a look at a classic clip from Just the Job. It's on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to take a look. And that's about two minutes. Right, I'm going for a closer look, see if it cheers me up a bit. How insensitive is that? I took Peter to one side while Jimmy did his solo spot Jim's things. I didn't want Peter to hear it from anyone else. Anyway, what happened next? It's history. Everything okay? Is this some sort well, of fucking joke, you, Eric? Why would I want to be reminded of that? I, I don't choose the plane. It's, it's, it's some bloke called Dave. Oh, he's proper angry now. That's me. Right. I remember that. Can we reset, please? Shit. I'm going to have to leave the country. Totally pointless piece of tat, no doubt, rescued from a bin somewhere. You all right, PC? Not really, LJ. What's the matter? You look like you walked in on your parents. Leave it, mate. Leave it. We just had a fax from the higher ups. Those who know better. I thought I might read it out for the viewers at home. What's going on? Well, I know what you're thinking. A fax? How modern! Well. <laughs> <clears throat> to whom it may concern. Latest viewer feedback from test audience. Show and host feel tired and past their prime. Show and host, fuck's sake. Sidekick. Looks like he'd rather be somewhere else most of the time. Fair point. Bringing Frank on camera regularly has not improved engagement. The audience say, yeah, Frank. Jesus, peace. My mum watches this. The guests and mostly unknown to the audience, then don't cut our fucking budget! You want... You pay peanuts, you get these fucking monkeys! I'm doing my best. Look, it's not your fault, gnashing Norman, but to be fair, you're a one-and-done act. I've got range. Have you? Uh, no, not really. 
New segments seem desperate. Uh, should we really be reading this out? Well, of course they're desperate. We've been doing this show since you prosperous assholes were just a bulge in your pool boy's trousers. PC, think it through, mate. Under the circumstances, the prudent option seems to be curtail the current season to a contractually obligated conclusion in three weeks. What? Frank! Sorry, Jimmy. True, mate. Three more shows? Yeah. And then we're done? Yep. How am I going to pay my bills? Good night, mate. No, 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 no. I am not standing for this. You listen to me, you TV moguls. We're not standing for this. There are supposed to be another 15 shows in this season. 15! <laughs> you want three? How are you feeling then, Eric? Three? Why are you That's asking me that? Do you remember earlier when I asked you to keep the show on track? Do you remember that? Yeah, I, I do, Amy, yes. Yeah, good, fuck good. That's three very shows. good. That's very, very good. Why do I feel like you mean yeah, the exact opposite of that? Eric, would you just step off camera there for this bit? Do you mind? Ten seconds. Yeah. Just... What? Or you can have there. Going in five, four, three... The studio his bluff, of course. What fantastic on. memories there from one of the nation's fantastic most beloved TV there. shows. The Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across many, many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. The last time I got told that, three young men found themselves dead before dawn. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Eric. He works here. Step out in front of the camera there, Eric. Come here. Now, Eric. Tell everyone, who was that right. voice? Uh, Tell everyone, Do Do that Do voice? Dorothy Hammerman. Dorothy Hammerman. Do Dorothy in the Hammerman. wrong slot. In um, the wrong yes. slot. So would you say that we are yeah. on track, Eric? No, nah, that's not the right guest. I'll scribble it out. We're dead men. Mm. Dorothy Hammerman, everyone. <laughs> She's all here. Oh, that's the end of your album. Mrs. Hammerman, you called me early. Why? I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I thought you were running this show. It's quite a large team. Yeah, I don't want to hear it, Eric. Let's get this over with. Deal with this. Deal with this. Jesus. I'm in a right bastard of a mood. Wanker that stank. I don't want to say any more about it. Probably poison anyway. How have you been? Oh, you been? busy on the campaign trail, mostly. Busy on the campaign It'll be trail. worth it. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Have you got a question, Eamon? Have you got a question? A gentleman Eamon? is always there to greet a lady upon her arrival. Wouldn't you agree, Eamon? Sorry about that, Mrs. Hammerman. The old uh, survival instinct kicked in and I scarpered. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, we could just uh, forget about the question, skip the clip. I mean, we're off track now. Yes, let's do that. I mean, I'd skip to the end at this point, but then what do I know? I'm only the most successful woman in television! Successful woman in television! Pick a guess, machine's bleeping. So, do you want me to go to the end? Do you want me to go to the end? Be fair on your other guests. Be fair and besides, it's always so entertaining to watch your little breakdown. <laughs> Dorothy Hammond, everybody. <laughs> oh, I'll see you later with that special song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's my dreams, darling. <laughs> yeah, just get the clip there, Eric. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm going to see if there's another one out there. See if we can get home early. Well, looks like you won't be hanging around for too long, Dorothy. <laughs> Thanks, God. Time is money, darling, unless you want the fucking stank of balls. In 1941, long before Just the Job ever aired, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Give me that woman! Martin, behave! Martin, behave! Jesus, erase your thumb-fucking Christ! Let's just go in! It's... Uh, well, it's not him, it's some uh, drunk old bloke called Martin, and uh, I presume you're his carer. Uh, we're already off track, just play the music. Are you with him? 
for joining us. What's it like being friends with Peter Clement? What's it like Jesus, I raise your knobs, mug like Christ. What a fucking ridiculous question. Well, just stick into the script. We're mm. Peter's parents, pet, but if I had to guess... I'd don't say, guess, I Fanny. Guess, I'd say, I'd say, if you don't know, say you don't bloody know. No, say you don't bloody know. I don't know. Mr. and Mrs. Clement, everybody. Is that it? Yeah, that's that it. beeping Can means pick a guest. I suppose you've worked that out by now. Massive waste of time. It's not his fault. Don't worry about it, Ma. I can stick up for you. And don't think I didn't notice your tone earlier, Martin Clement. We'll be having words on the coach. Fuck's sake. All I wanted to do was watch the bloody snooker. But of course, it wasn't only just the job that the nation invited into their hearts. The the Starting in 1977 and running for nearly six years every weeknight, you brought that incredible Peter Clement style to your eponymously named late night chat show, PC. Let's look at a classic moment now. Let's look at a classic moment now. And a couple of minutes back. Same monitor as before, Eric. That's it. So, four guests in, and we're clearly... What's your plan, Eric? Early retirement in San Palmarino. ...dropped out due to last-minute advice from his agent. He'd been in a successful pop band back then, the Socialite, but since received a call into ministry and became a rising star in church circles. Peter's always... Oh, he's having a drink. And the socialites. They'd always regret it not meeting him. Penny for him. If you were a pop star, Eric, a genuine cocaine groupies on the tour bus level pop star, mm. would you give it all up to be a priest? Oh, I don't know. It's probably as crazy as giving up a five night a week chat show to become a politician. Ha! I'll drink to that. Bishop, a few years ago, oh, no thanks, I still need my job. Can we reset, please? <laughs> yep, this is the one where the Archbishop gets drunk. Let's skip over it. Press the add button again. Oh, I know that look. We should have given up after the first break. What? That's where it all started to go wrong. It's not so bad. Did you not see that last section? Have you got sudden onset amnesia? Please don't do anything stupid. I'll think about it. Please don't. Ten seconds. And all because of a few shots. Going in five, four, three. It was through me and a dodgy off license. Eamon, we're live. Eamon, we're live. Eamon. Jesus, a racial tube-bearing Christ. What now, Eamon? Yes, right. So here we are. Yeah, we're back there now. Sorry about that. Well, unforgettable stuff. Uh, but while you took all the credit... Uh, but while you took all the credit... While you... While you... While you... While you... <laughs> well, <laughs> well, oh. no, come on, come on, no, no, no. Come on. Oh. Wouldn't die. Oh. 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 No. Eric, you need to get this man some help. No. Eric, you need Mr. To get Clement, this man please. Some help. No, I've had enough. Clement, 
I've been trying to maintain a forced smile all evening, but this show seems designed to annoy me. I mean, who chose those clips for fuck's sake? And I am sober enough to know that no good is going to come from staying around and watching this once great entertainer have a nervous collapse. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he'd be fine in a minute. I really wouldn't be too sure about that. We're going to get everyone out to do the song in a bit. There is not going to be a fucking song, Eric! We are done! I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but this evening's episode of Bits of Your Life is coming to an end prematurely. I'm sure they'll find something to put in the gap in the shed. I don't know, probably something like cat football or something equally pointless. Clearly, Eamon Tightly is having a difficult moment. I'm sure I could do the song. Oh, don't, don't be ridiculous, Eamon. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, in a few weeks, I will be asking for your vote. I will be asking I'll be asking you to decide whether I'm the type I'll of man who will have your back in a crisis. Well, one thing I did learn well, in Konislava is not to leave any man behind. Is not to leave and tonight, behind. the man who has fallen and tonight, the man who is Eamon Tightly. I've been getting angry all night when I I've should have shown concern. This show should, should never have, have show happened. Never Eamon evidently needs help not to be given a handful of pills and forced back onto the treadmill. Well, I would quite like my pills. Because this horrible, horrible, horrible fucking industry, entertainment will take everything that you have and nothing, nothing will satisfy its appetite. But it's not just entertainment, is it, ladies and gentlemen? It's everything. It's the continual grafting and getting poorer. It's the working two jobs and not being able to feed your children because we're all on the fucking treadmill, except for those privileged and entitled bastards who own it. Who own it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you vote for me in seven weeks' time, I will guarantee you this. I will guarantee Advance. We'll smash that smash fucking it. treadmill smash that. and give you your dignity back. And give you your dignity. Back. Roll in titles. <laughs> Treat with all.